Hey guys, how's it going? We're gonna start off by doing a little molding and casting. couple holes in these 3D prints so I gotta fill them up before I mold and cast. So I'm just gonna use some magic sculpt. So I did a little spring cleaning in the garage and I found a whole bunch of stuff and then I came across an old rogue body that I never did anything with. So I figured I can add this into a stream series down the line, but I had to find hands for her. So I found uh, these 3D printed hands that my friend sent me should work. Only problem is if you try and cast with holes in them, you're asking for trouble. So what will happen is the mold will go into the hollowness of the hand and you have a nightmare. So hopefully you guys are doing well today. Finally got a nice day.
Hey Vigilante, Raz, Joe, Jerry, 234. How you guys doing today? All right, so we filled up all the gaps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drill through the wrists and then we're gonna glue them going downwards like that. And then from there, we're gonna mix up some of this mold. So let me go drill these out real quick. Alright, so this is why we have a perfect example why 3D prints are not good for why what I do because I drummel through and I really went slow and it shattered. This one luckily didn't shatter, but that is the downfall to 3D prints and that's why I don't like using them for customs. So that's why we're making resin copies of these hands. I mean, it went really slow, didn't do anything major, and it just shattered. But, that's the way it is. It's too big, too big. Alright, so what we do is get a toothpick, throw that through there. Let's see if we can make this a little bit more sturdy. You guys got sound coming through just to make sure. Having a little problem with OBS earlier. So basically we got a nice little uh, holding it downwards. I put some glue around the edges so it stays. Now with this, you have to actually let the glue dry. If you try to use this uh, Instaset, 
and then make the mold, it doesn't work with each other. So that's kind of a pain. So as you can see with this one, it's going to be a little different. So let's... Let's glue. Give that a bit to dry. So this is a Mold Star 30. Um, not really a fan of this molding stuff, but it's kind of a little bit cheaper. It's a little bit easier. You gotta mix A and B in equal amounts. Now, if you don't use this stuff in a certain amount of time, it goes bad. So I opened this stuff up about a month or so ago. So I just need to use it all up. for a second.
sure we have equal setup. All right, so before I mix, gotta make sure this is, this is not really that set up that well. All right, I don't want to use this, but one more time without slicing the cup or my finger Hey there Dolly, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. Just doing a little molding and casting. So you guys could see how kind of do these little dinky things. Hopefully you can hear me.
said I was having problems with OBS before. I thought I fixed it, but I didn't. Uh, yeah, Dolly, I took off all the cloth and then I kind of sculpted wrinkles and stuff on the outfit and then I uh, painted it. Uh, when you take the cloth off that statue, there's a amazing body sculpt underneath, so there's a lot there. I mean, it's a great statue. I just thought the cloth ruined the sculpt because it hid it hit all that amazing body sculpt, and it wasn't actually completely flush. So, so once you take the cloth off that statue, you could do tons of stuff to it. All right, so I'm gonna mix this stuff. You have about what is it? Pot life is 45 minutes, and it cures in six hours. So I'm going to mix it up and then I'm going to go into the vacuum chamber, get all the air uh, gases out and then we'll come back and do the pour. So basically we take this. Now you're some, the way they say is you're supposed to mix them both into a cup, but not the way I just did it. Uh, but we're going to mix it into this one and then pour it into that one and mix again. Yeah, I can already feel that this stuff is probably going to go bad in another couple weeks. Of course, I should have put towels down. <clears throat> I mixed way more than I needed, but it doesn't really matter at this point. This stuff is going to go bad. I don't like this uh, Mold Star series because while you can get a good casting out of it, the more you use this stuff, the faster it pulls apart, and it's not very durable like the pink stuff. The Mold Max 30 is amazing. That stuff you can mold and cast and cast and cast, and it's stuff like never breaks. This stuff tears very easily, so this is good for like a throwaway item. But if you want to cast up like 10, 15, 20 items, you want to get the Mold Max 30. So one of the reasons they say at the Jersey Fest show is when you first mix it into this cup, and if you were to pour it in, what happens is you still might have some mess ups. So they tell you to throw it into another cup, mix it again, and then pour it into your mold. Hey Raphael, yeah we're doing a few things today, I figured I'd do this uh, molding first, 
get this out of the way. That's life, Raz. It always happens. I was uh, hoping to get a lot more done today, but I cleaned out the garage, so... Didn't get as much done as I wanted to, but the garage needed it. Next is the studio. Hopefully next weekend. Not this weekend, but the following weekend. I could spend all weekend cleaning the studio. I gotta purge so much stuff. Like today, I just threw out probably three bags worth of just junk and also body parts and broken resin pieces that just shattered and just collecting dust. Uh, Raphael, right now I'm using this Mold Star uh, 30. I don't like this stuff. I just had it because I did a project for someone a while back, but there was a little bit left and it's actually going to start going bad. Uh, the Mold Max 30, the pink stuff. That's the best molding stuff out there. This is good for one uh, thing. So I got these two hands here from 3D Prints. Uh, my friend did. So I'm gonna use it for this statue down the line, this uh, rogue. I don't know what I'm turning it into yet, but it'll be for a stream. So I have these 3D uh, print hands, I wanna make copies and resin. So I just wanna use up this Mold Star stuff. I don't like this. I really don't like this stuff. It's just, it's not worth the money and hassle when you could just buy the pink stuff and then your mold will last like years while this stuff breaks apart in one casting. Alright, so we're mixed up pretty well. I'm going to go into the garage and put this in the vacuum chamber and get out all the bubbles. I would show you guys how it works, but I'm not putting that vacuum chamber in the studio because I don't want any of the gases in here. So let me get that set up. I'll be right back. All right, so that is degassing at the moment. So we'll let that sit for a few minutes. That's good, Raz. I mean, uh, you know, as earlier, I drilled a hole through this and that resin cracked, where this resin didn't. 
um, but that's just 3D uh, stuff for you for now. So this stuff is on its way out, so we don't use that anymore. Right, I'm only using the uh, Mold Star, yeah, that stuff for now, uh, because it was cheaper for the uh, trial kit than the Mold uh, Max 30 for something I did for a client. Um, it was just like I just like I said, I just had a little extra, so I'm using it. But whenever I do molding and casting, I always get the Mold Max 30, which is the pink stuff. So, for example. This is the Mold Max 30. Um, this stuff, like, it's very hard, like, like very hard to rip that apart, but that's the edge. So if you try to dig your fingernail into this, you can't really break that apart. This blue stuff, you could go in and really rip this apart, especially when you go to split it. So this stuff doesn't last as long. Like, you can really go in here and chisel this out Whereas this stuff, it's really, really hard to break this far. I've, uh, I've used this uh, pink Mole Max 30 stuff, and I've casted like when I was doing those head bases for the premium formats. I could cast up like maybe uh, 30, 35, and still keep using the mold. Whereas I did this mold for the uh, the Miss Marvel, and when I pulled this apart, it started splitting on me. So like you can see, it just starts ripping. And I'm probably even doing anything, but this, it's just different. So, honestly, stick with the Mole Max 30 for everything. And I also noticed that if you, uh, the blue stuff, the, uh, Mold Star stuff, um, if, it, if you put an item in there and it gets very hot, and when you pull that item out, it seems that a hot resin cooks it to the point where it gets fragile, too. It's weird. Yeah, I would, I would build the spray booth. You can't go wrong with uh, building your own. The, the, the Mold Star uh, 30 that I just used, that blue stuff, um, it's not bad. It's not going to like, you can still make a mold and stuff with it. You're not, it's not the end of the world. It's just that if you're planning on making multiple copies, it's going to wear out at you a lot faster. The Mold Max 30, the pink stuff, it, it will see so your Mold Star, they make it easier for you. You mix A and B together in equal amounts. Mold Star, you have to do the ratio with the uh, pink uh, hardener with the, uh, the you know, the mold. So that just makes it a little bit different. But I, I have molds over here on my shelf that I've had probably for five, six years now with the Mold Star. I mean, the Mold Max. And I can still cast on them. Where uh, the other day I went through my molds and a couple of the old blue stuff I had to throw away because it was deteriorated to the point where... You couldn't even mold anything from them anymore.
Now you, you do have to vacuum uh, each one though. You, you definitely have to degas them. So basically just degas it and it should come out like nice and creamy. You're supposed to do it this high and go like really slow so you get in all that detail and stuff. Now I'm pouring this at a weird angle, so if it slips and falls on my hand, I just want to show you guys. I picked up one of those cheap degas chambers you get off of eBay. Um, it does fine for what I need to do, but it, it my friend destroyed it on me. But he ordered like a really crazy expensive one. That's amazing. Now they say you, you, I guess you could get away without uh, degassing it, but degassing it will make your life a lot easier. Let's make sure we get this one. Now, a cool thing about, I don't know how the blue one works, but with the mold uh, Max 30, the pink stuff, you can cut up your old mold, and you can throw chunks in there, and then pour it in while you're throwing chunks in, and it actually helps you uh, save on material. So if you have an old mold that goes bad, you can actually chop it up. I don't know how this blue stuff works. It's possible, but I haven't tested it. Good, I guess I uh, had just enough for this. So that worked out pretty well. I don't care that it goes over the top, I can always cut out that hole later. So like all that that's left in this cup, you can let that sit or you can pour it in another little cup and then you can let it cure up and then you can use that as filler, which I'm pretty sure you could do with the blue, but I've always used the red so this has no use for me. There we go, so now you just let this sit for six hours and it should cure up, but usually I let stuff sit for the day. So hopefully down the line I can figure out what to do with this Rogue, and I got two hands for her, and then uh, maybe we can use that as a stream item down the line. So I'm going to put this on the floor and let it cure up for the day. I'm going to work on a little Miss Marvel and then we'll do Daphne later.
Yeah, the base came out pretty well on her. Uh, kind of cleaned it up a little bit the other day. Oops. Yeah, she's getting there. She's getting closer to finish, so once she starts getting ready to be painted, I gotta come up with another item to add in with uh, Daphne. Hey, what's up, Ryu? I know what that snort means. So, let's see, we got two... trying to get me in trouble already. Alright, so let's do some cleaning. Save Daphne for last. I uh, did a little bit of sand work on her this week. So we see if we can get, clean her up a little bit more. So there's some lines in here from the actual molding and casting uh, from that blue stuff you just saw. So I gotta kind of seam it up a bit. A really bad seam over in here. Alright, so I think what we're going to try to do is the knot on her today, and then I can clean out the bottom, the back sides of these. So let's see how we're going to do this.
I don't like usually going that tight around an item, especially if you handle it. Sometimes this uh, saran wrap actually digs into your primer, especially if it's a hot day and your hot hands. And but I think we could get away with it just for a little bit. So instead of getting baby powder all over the place, I could kind of just use the saran wrap for now. So all we really got left on Miss Marvel is clean up the base, finish up the sash, Decal her up, make sure there's no scratches. Um, and then I think we're pretty much getting closer to be painting her. Gonna mix a little fixing into this just uh, maybe it'll help a bit. Uh, no, Ryu, this is, uh, this is a fan art Psylocke statue that somebody had mangled up, gave it to me, so I'm turning it into a Miss Marvel. I don't think they did kits of it, but a lot of guys these days do, uh, painted versions and kits as well. It's a Campbell fan art statue. Just a stream item, just to kind of do a little bit of extra work on it while I do some other items. It's kind of what the stream items are about. Um, All right. Just to make sure, let me look online for some pictures. Just bear with me, just looking to see about some...
sort of had this in my thing, so I like the way this knot looks, so I could try to copy it in a way. Yeah, thanks. Uh, that ain't great, man. I I can't actually wait to start mine up. I think you guys will like what I get a chance to do with mine.
I'm so glad I got that kit. It's like a grail for me. No, Nate Gray was actually fairly easy. It was just setting him up with the uh, the rods into the base. Once I got that done, it was easy. It's just the uh, ownage, you know, the factory. They kind of do what they want. Um, if they actually put a rod up the leg, like they uh, they should have. It probably would have been a lot easier, but it wasn't one of those kits where you have like something kind of like a like say like it's a cape. Like if the character has like a cape like Magneto, those are always a pain to deal with because the cape has nothing really to set it on the paint. But with Nate, it was actually fairly easy, so I didn't have to worry about anything like that. Yeah, I wanted to give him a nice bright paint up and uh, really go with the blue and yellow. It was uh, giving him the browns and the jacket really set it up. I know in the comics they just paint them all blue, but for the statue I wanted to do a little bit more with it. I think the only thing it's missing from the sculpt is uh, if he actually put some like leather wear on the jacket. I think that would have made it like really, really pop. It's sort of there, it's got some texture, but I mean, I don't care, it's still a grail for me. I'm happy I got the character. I've been wanting to make him for years, but just never really found a statue that would work. I'm gonna put you on the spot, Ryu. Uh, for you guys in the chat who don't know, he actually has a amazing Harley Quinn uh, kit. And if he gets off his ass and gets it out there, I think a lot of you guys would love to get your hands on one. So we gotta gotta pressure him to get that out the door. Yeah, his, uh, his Harley Quinn is absolutely mind-blowing.
Told him when he gets ready, uh, send me it or send me pictures. I'll do a video on it. This way everybody can see what he's doing. It's awesome. But like everything, last year screwed it up for all of us, so everything's delayed. Yeah, get uh, get that get it out. I'll do a review on it. Send everybody your way. I think a lot of people would love to get their hands on that one. I won't ruin it. I'm not going to say what it's about, who did it, or whatever. I'm just saying he's got a got a Harley out there. That's amazing. I think that's good enough for the knot. Mm, maybe we can work on this one here since I got the A's. Ah, your Harley's better than that. I gotta go in the garage and roll this out. Be right back. I need the paper.
So this sash is nice and thick now, so while it might not look great being thick, it's not going to snap or break. So that's a good thing. Even with rods in there pretty thin, it could still crack and break on you. Wrong, wrong way of putting it in. So at least now we're secured. Alright, I can clean a lot of this up with some sanding. Alright, so next step is let's try and take this off and use some baby powder to get it nice and flush. 
So it's a good thing I didn't do this one. Put some baby powder on this real quick. And that should work out pretty well. Go a little bit more just to make sure. There we go. Got a nice little uh, knot. Goes in no problem. And that should work out very well for her. So let's put her in here so she doesn't break on me. What do you guys think? I think it works pretty well. I'm sure once it cures up a bit, I could sort of sand it a bit so it doesn't really mark anything up, but I think, uh, I think it works fine. I didn't want to go too crazy of a huge knot on her, just something smaller. Looks a little more wrinkled. Yeah, so she's a. Uh, she's got to clean up, detail up, finish the last part of this sash. Um, clean up the base a little bit more. I mean, the only downside to the base is the peg underneath her uh, left foot here. Um, it might show a little bit if you look to the side, but honestly, if I didn't put a rod all the way up the leg to the, like the knee we'd be asking for a lot of trouble on this one uh, because just having this little ankle support her is a big huge mistake but I think it works out pretty well yeah she uh, she went along pretty fast hair came out well gotta clean it up a little bit more uh, gotta work out the Let's see. Um, what do you guys think? A little bit of uh, wrinkles in the wrist areas? Maybe in the inside a bit of it? I think that might work. a little bit of like uh maybe i'll go chop this up a little bit real quick or sand it and then add a little wrinkle here
Hey, what's up, Marco? Did you just get home? Getting onto the desk to work on a few things? Yep, that's always a good thing. Um, the new uh, Sideshow Galactus, I, it looks okay, but I think the first one was better. All I know is this Power Girl's uh, just about the same size, so... Then again, I'm not really into cosmic stuff, so I, I didn't really pay attention much to it. I mean, the sculpt is great. I think it's just the size that's kind of throwing a lot of people off. Although I would like to see them do some Fantastic Four characters. You know? I mean, you could Fantastic, Mr. Fantastic, The Thing, Fantastic, you know, all of them. I think they need to be made a little bit. I don't know why, you don't need to freak out. If you don't like it, you move on to the next thing, that's all. But like I said, I wish they would uh, tackle the Fantastic Four characters. Even though I probably wouldn't buy them, I would just love to see, you know, just see some of, some of those characters being made for once. Put some wrinkles on that one. You know, there's a bunch of Silver Surfers, there's two Galactus, and I think the only, uh, they only did a Sue Storm back in the day. Alright, I want to go chop the sides of this down, do a wrinkle here and here.
Yeah, well, that's the thing is, uh, I, I guess either they're only limited to who they can make when they can make it from, you know, Marvel and DC, or, you know, I'm pretty sure they have to keep in line with stuff too, like, like my guess is Power Girl comes out next year, so maybe Power Girl's gonna make a comeback around that time, so the statue goes well, uh, maybe there's gonna be a huge thing with Galactus this summer, so maybe that's why they're doing Galactus now. Maybe they're, you know, for all I know, Sideshow might have, like, the Fantastic Four done. And they're just waiting for, like, Marvel to do, like, a storyline with them or the movies. I mean, who knows at this point? That's just speculation. But like I said, I'm pretty sure, you know, Marvel and Disney are dictating when they can do stuff. Yeah, Tarex would be good. Uh... You know, you also have the Inhumans, so you got Black Bolt, Medusa, Crystal, um, I mean, there, there's a slew of characters that could be done. Uh, you got the Scrolls, Super Scroll. I know they got to make money, and I know, you know, the whole lockdown delayed everything, so you got to kind of do what's going to sell. Hey, what's up, Terrell? Um, I mean, what other stuff? You, uh, there's a lot of characters that could be done. I mean, I can only imagine when Storm comes out. If she's not like a a grail, I think people go crazy. But I'm sure once the Fantastic Four movies come out, I'm pretty sure it will, that's all we'll ever see for a long time.
All right, a little bit of wrinkles. Nothing too crazy. Clean them up another day. And uh, yeah, I think maybe by next uh, stream, uh, we finish up the sash and then after that, paintwork. I'll detail her on like during the weekday or something. All right, let's move on to Daphne. So I had a chance to strip down the head, get all the paint off of that. And I did a lot of chopping and sanding on the knees. So we're gonna clean those up a bit today. Uh, I actually looked online and uh, which I'm gonna call it. Uh, her shoes are weird, actually. She's got these little arrow things. Kind of get over it when we get to that. So I think I'm gonna fill up the lines going up here. I sanded down some of the wrinkles here. Cleaned up her waistline a bit. I mean, even though we're not gonna see all this, you know, I still wanted just to sort of clean it up a bit here. And then uh, maybe we can work on the chest a little bit today as well. What are you getting, Raz? What are you building a new PC? Alright, let me get something to drink real quick before we start. Surprised you actually were able to, well, you just got a CPU so you're fine. I know uh, graphic cards are really hard to come by now with the whole shortage of everything. Alright, we're gonna mix up a little bit of fix it into this. Start off with the face a bit. And then we'll move on to the body. It's all the tedious work of getting the figure cleaned up. Apple just released those uh, iMac with the M1s. I was tempted to upgrade to one of those. Uh, but I think I'm going to wait till they have like the M2s. My uh, my current iMac that I got in 2019, ex the what is it, expires 2022. The service, 
So I figure maybe by then I'll upgrade to the, they have something like an M2 or something. What I'll do is I'll take the iMac in the office and I'll put it into here. And then I'll do something with this old uh, 2017 iMac somewhere else. Those M1 chips are amazing. They make Intel look like actually baby's toys. Well, that's good you got the card before the lockdowns, because right now it's, like, impossible to get stuff. Uh, Marco, did you, uh, post a video on it? Or either that, send me an email, I'd like to check it out. Yeah, the only problem with the IMAX, which I don't like, is, uh, it's an all-in-one. Uh, I would love to have a Mac Pro, but I'm not paying $5,000 for like a base model for one of those. Uh, there's just, you know, it's not like the old Mac Pros back in when I got the one in 2008. So I figure uh, once the iMacs uh, are out of their warranty in 2022, I can actually pull off the uh, screen and actually dust it out. All right, Marco. Yeah, let me uh, check. I'll check it out when you're done. Yeah, I still have my 2008 Mac Pro, except it's uh, all I can use it for now is uh, Photoshop and Illustrator. Can't do anything else with it anymore. I don't even have it hooked up to the net anymore. It's just a uh, standalone uh, Photoshop and Illustrator machine. But those M1 Macs though, holy crap, those things are, like the MacBook Air blows away these two iMacs. It's crazy. Oh wow, you went crazy in 2012, Raphael. All I did was get like a base model in 2008 for I think it was like 33,000. But I was doing graphic work and freelance illustration and stuff with it. Well, you should keep an eye on the M1 chips. Uh, even all the PC uh, YouTube channels are raving about the M1s. The ARM architecture is blowing everything out of the water. Like they, like what is it, the uh, M1 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, like literally you can use it for like three days before it's even down to like 70% battery life whereas uh an intel mac air macbook air or macbook pro will like cook a uh, bacon on it it's amazing what these m1s can do and that's the only thing that sucks though about the m1 chips you, it's not a the storage is integrated into the chip so you can't change the chip and the storage i know that's what sucks about them but you know Get a, get a Mac Mini with the M1 chip, and then just put an external hard drive on it. And you're pretty much set to go. The, the Mac Mini M1 still blows away all the Intel uh, machines. Like I saw, uh, I saw some benchmarks where the Mac Mini M1 almost, pretty much came close to almost did better than the Mac Pro Intel. Which is insane. A $800 machine blowing away like a 5000 uh, base model. So that's my goal, 2022, uh, if they have the new M M2s, maybe I'll do my upgrades then. Yeah, the, the, the M1 chips are just, it's mind boggling what uh, they did with this ARM architecture.
Yeah, that's that's the only downside to the whole uh, getting the monitor and stuff. I've become pretty simple as I uh, got away from graphic design. I just need to do like iMovie, uh, make sure my main programs work, a lot of storage, and that's it. I missed the days where I could, you know, the Mac Pro was able to upgrade it whenever I wanted to. Good luck with it, Raz. Hopefully, uh, it's a nice, smooth upgrade. I mean, I used to have the 2011 Mac Mini in the studio when I first bought this house back in the... 2012. Uh, it was great for just, you know, listening to music and looking up pictures and all that stuff. But as I decided to stream, there was no way that thing was going to do anything. Although I still have it. Hey, Steger, how's it going? I still actually have my uh, 1998 Sawtooth G4 computer and I actually uh, a few months back I picked up some stuff on Black Friday to actually upgrade it with an SSD just to have it running for fun. I'm hanging in there today here just a uh, nice good uh, warm day clean the garage getting uh, some work done.
Yeah, the G4 was my first Mac. Graduated art school when I was like, I need to get a computer. And surprisingly enough, it is still going strong. Now mind you, you can't connect to the internet. And I actually saved all my old program CDs. So I was actually able to install everything on it. It's got, I think, Photoshop 5? I think it's 5.5. Five. And Illustrator, like, 5 or whatever it was. Still runs. I even have the three backup mice and the hockey puck mice and uh, the gray small keyboards for it as well. I actually love those mice and keyboards. Everyone else hated them. You know, I haven't looked into monitors in ages. Uh, ever since I got the iMac, I really just had no need to. Um, but I do watch, uh, what is it, Linus Tech Tips a lot. And I watch uh, Luke Piani, you know, about PC and Mac stuff. And holy crap, the systems that people build. I wouldn't even have room for half of those. Then again, if I was into video games, I probably would. If you're looking to get a cheap iMac, just go to the Apple Store and uh, do the uh, go to the um, refurbished. A lot of the M1 Mac Minis have been popping up there. Decent pricing. Hey Reese, what's up Butterfly?
This mask really messed up a lot of the eye areas. Which Hulk head is, is that the one uh, you said last time with Troy's? Oh, that's cool. Is it a clean prep or is it a difficult one?
Uh, no, Ryu, it's the A's. That's what I use for all the stuff. Just trying to rebuild some of her face that I chopped out from the mask. Um, just, uh, get one of those, uh, women's makeup brushes you get at, like, CVS, those big bushy ones. And you can use one of those to clean off your statue. Um, they're nice and soft and they won't, like, grab anything. Because if you use a Swifter, you'll probably pull a finger or some kind of dangly part off your statue with it. But if you need to wash it, just, you know, a rag and water. If it's a, whatchamacallit, if it's a factory paint from China, like a Sideshow statue, water with a rag won't kill it. Uh, but if it's something like I paint up with my paint, then if it gets very dusty, then you're asking for trouble. So you want to use like a soft brush. Basically, you just want to have everything in a glass case anyway. got some of the eyes fixed up now. I'm gonna have to paint in the uh, eyelashes at the end. Some of the bangs might cover it anyway. Yeah, that sounds about right. 
Oh, thanks, Raphael. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm just kind of sharing what I do. That's pretty much it. Hopefully it helps people out. Well, thanks for the support on Patreon. When if you join, I appreciate that as well. Once, uh, once Miss Marvel is done, uh, I got a few ideas on. I think I got a couple other sculpts. We'll see what the Patreon guys uh, vote on who to do. It'll get there. Hopefully, it'll evolve a little bit more this year. Ryu, tell your pops you're just going to throw it into a wood chipper. Alright, we're going to work on the chest. We're going to clean that up, and then we're going to work our way down, clean up the sides, the ankles, uh, I mean the knees, and then work down here. This way we could try to get most of the bare figure set up. this up Alright, so the idea, so we're going to do the one where we show her chest, so we have to work out, so I think the idea is I'll work out the chest first, and then when I'm ready to attach the head, I'll work out the neck area and all that. Yeah, uh, I have to, the best way for me to sculpt something like this is kind of get the bare body fixed first and then worry about the clo clothing. So when I get to the, the scarf, it'll cover everything, but that's not a big deal. No, we're not going Power Girl crazy on this one, but I still want to make it look like there is a chest there between the opening. So, hopefully it's nothing too big.
But if you see that one drawing there, it kind of want to go like that. So like I said last time, uh, Daphne has the chest open, tight skirt. Velma has the heavy sweater, flowing skirt. So with Daphne we see chest, and with uh, Velma we see booty. Oh well, Raphael, it's with cells, so... <laughs> After all, it's just a sculpt. Yeah, I got I know a couple people where the wife won't allow them to have uh, any of females in their collection. But whatever.
So it's gonna look a little weird here, but that'll get covered anyway. So it doesn't matter. Well, Klein is always right. Uh, people get jealous all the time. Yeah, butterfly, I've heard of stuff like that too in the past. All I know is I get to have whatever I want in my collection and that's all that counts. Why was Raccoon's message deleted? What did you say? <laughs> did you say something bad? Google didn't like it.
<laughs> yep. They're coming after me now. I did nothing wrong. Hey Matthew, thanks. You're getting there. Little by little. I think what I might do is when I add the opening, I might add a little bit extra chest up top to make it look like it's kind of pushing up a little bit. So, but we'll see what happens when I get to that point. Nothing too crazy, but try to give it a little bit of a pop.
Uh, hey Shadow, um, it's possible I didn't get a chance to reply yet. I'll check, but you could send it again. I usually try to do all my answering on emails on Sundays, so it's not that I didn't ignore you. Uh, maybe I just didn't get to it yet. It's kind of the day I wake up, I sit down, I video edit, I uh, go through emails. Otherwise, if I did it all week long, I never get stuff done. So I'm going to build up some of the other sides of the chest, uh, but when I go to sand it, it'll kind of get cleaned up a little bit more, because it looks weird at the moment. Thanks Shadow. Yeah, like I said, if uh, I'll check again, but if you want, you could go ahead and send another message. Uh, but like I said, on uh, Sunday is when I kind of try to do everything. I'm just uh, at the moment, I'm just backed up. Last year was a real mess, so it's kind of catch up year. Take it easy, Raz. Good luck with the system. Yeah, Ryu, you gotta get those kits out. I think everybody in the chat would love to see those kits. When uh, Ryu gets them out, I'll definitely do a video on them for everybody. Uh, they're really good.
there we go. It's got the chest kind of built out there a little bit more now. Maybe the light's kind of killing it. Yeah, she's going to be uh, well, well set up there for when we uh, get that shirt on. It's a good thing. All right. a little bit thicker than I thought. Alright, so since the chest is set up, I'm gonna have to fine tune it with some sandpaper. And then like I said, when I put the shirt on it, I'll probably build up a little bit in the inside of it a little bit more to make it look squished. Uh, but let's kind of clean up the edges, the ankles, and all this other stuff. Work our way down.
Yeah, it's uh, butterflies kind of the what I'm trying to do with the stream so people can see what's going on. Try to get all the basic figure going. Um, shadow, yeah, these are uh, basically uh, items for the streams, and then afterwards they'll probably be up on my site or eBay, one of those. Uh, but the goal is what might happen is sell Daphne and uh, Velma as a set. Uh, so once they're both done or getting closer to done, I might think about doing a base as like a, you know, set them both up together in a base. But we'll see. I would love to keep everything I do, but gotta pay the bills. My bills. I know Ryu knows that one. <laughs> I mean, uh, I Shadow, I did put up uh, the Savage She Dragons on my eBay channel, but everyone was saying in the chat that they couldn't find it. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a store, but I have a regular eBay, which is Vince Vale Customs. I don't understand what's going on with that. That's what I'm thinking, uh, Shadow. A um, couple people gave some really good ideas, like maybe uh, a scenery in a graveyard, um, maybe a haunted house. Uh, but, but for right now, I just got to focus on getting the figures mainly done. Base can always come later. But if it is, if I do sell them as a set, it'll be one hell of a pricey set, though. Only because it's a lot of work to get all this stuff done. But we'll see. See what happens.
Uh, Shadow, it's just Vince Vail Customs. Uh, but some people said they couldn't find it under that. I'm not really sure why. Pretty much everything is Vince Vail Customs everywhere. Twitter, Patreon, uh, Instagram. Yeah, I'm not ruling out the graveyard idea. I think that might work pretty well. Um, Got to think about it a little bit more. I guess if anything I would try to set up the base with the two figures that can fit into a Besta case. So since I have Besta cases here for my collection I would try to design it for that. Uh, only because um, I think the majority of people out there sort of have those. Yeah, see, I don't know. Some people said that they couldn't find it for some reason. I don't know, because I don't have a store. So maybe looking for a store doesn't work. That's kind of the only thing I could think of. I jumbled out all the wrinkles and I'm sort of just just gonna have on uh, stockings anyway those uh, purple pantyhose or whatever you want to call them so it doesn't need to be super detailed
when I uh, did this section here with the Dremel tool, I started just getting uh, Dremel happy. And the wrinkles were just not coming out the way I wanted it, so I just chopped it all up. I have to get back onto my website and update it some more. Um, what happened was last year, the old uh, WordPress uh, program became obsolete, and I didn't finish updating the site yet. So that's why it's kind of messy. Uh, but what I like to do is every once in a blue moon, I'll clear out some of my personal stuff. And I might list it on the for sale section or I'd probably list it on eBay, one or the other. Um, the, the witch would call it. I do know I'm gonna put up for sale that uh, bust I did for Jesse's Garage Kits, the Air Elemental. 
It was fun to paint it out, but I don't want to keep it. I don't have any room. Um, best statue ever produced? Um, well, of course my favorite is Mark Newman's Power Girl. Uh, because, well, hell, I own four of them. Um, I'm waiting to see that, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, the, uh, Iron Kite Studios Hinata from Naruto. Um, when that goes up for pre-order, and I get that, probably in a year or two, that might be my grail. Um... I don't know. I, I like the uh, Green Lantern Prime 1 because I got to make my uh, Captain Marvel out of it. Um, let's see. One statue I, I actually love the sculpt. I don't care for the character at all was the uh, Selena Catwoman from the movie for Prime 1. I actually love the sculpt. Um, but I can't justify dropping that much money for a statue of a character I really don't like. But I mean, there's a lot out there, so I can't really... Yeah, Ryu, I'm gonna post my Rose uh, statues this weekend. I actually finally finished them. Sadly, the whole video series that I had planned for those that I started in 2014 or 13 or 12, I forgot what year it was, it, oh, I lost all that footage on the old computer. I'll explain it in the video, but that was kind of my learning uh, project because I started to do this full time. So since there's no schooling for it, I had to teach myself, but I'll explain all that. That's, uh, I'm kind of pissed I lost all that footage. It's like going to be like a seven part series. But that's what I get for using old computer and not backing everything up. Yeah, I, I had like seven videos. They were all edited almost. Uh, I had to fine tune them. Uh, everything was ready to go almost. Um, I just needed to finish the statues and then the computer just crapped out on me. iMovie wasn't working. It was like every time I loaded up iMovie it would just kind of crap out on me. It wouldn't shut down and then it kept on repairing and then I lost foot. It was just a mess. And when I lost everything that's kind of when I just had it and I just said I'm upgrading and I got the iMax. Shame too, it was a hell of a series I was working on. Everything from the initial 3D sculpt to uh, my editing on them and all that stuff. I think everyone would like the series, but well, I'll have to do another one down the line, I guess. Yeah, it was a lot of work. It was, a. Uh... I mean, now I think if I was to try it again, I would go with a different character, or if, even if I did Rose again, I would have done a different uh, setup. I mean, because the sculptors out there now are amazing what they can do, so... I don't know, we'll see. Maybe down the line I'll have a second attempt at something. For those that don't know, basically it was a commissioned uh, rose sculpt 3D, but this was like, you know, back before 3D sculptors were everywhere. Um, and it was a whole learning thing. Everything from designing it, to printing it, to molding, casting. It's kind of like my self-taught 
um, process to kind of like do this for a living. Uh, so it was a great experience. Just lost everything. Also trying to find the belt buckles for Rose, trying to add a cloth to the item, it was a <laughs> hell of a learning experience. But I'll get the video up this weekend, people can kind of see what the hell happened with that. So since her shoes are a little weird, they have these little arrows on them. Um, gonna try to build up the shoes a little bit now. I thought about leaving the wrinkles, but that's not gonna work. So I drummed them out. Yeah, that Huntress kit I just did, the person I did it for is a huge Huntress fan, so if you ever uh, get that out, you at least got one person interested. Hey Juan, uh, yeah, I had to translate that. That's a hell of a message. <laughs> um, I mean, finish my stream tonight or finish the statue itself? Uh, finishing the statue itself is going to take a time, but tonight I'm just kind of getting close to finishing up, getting her uh, situated. So let me uh, show you guys the shoes. It's uh, her shoes are a little weird. So put the image. Wow, that's a So that's her shoes, sort of her shoes. So I have to sort of kind of come up with a little bit of a look like that. So those shoes don't have high heels, but she's got high heels. So I'm gonna have to sort of do my own little take on it, but sort of give it those arrows.
Now those are cosplay shoes, I guess, so I want to try to copy it. So maybe what I'll do is uh, maybe make some kind of high heel shoes, but kind of give that little arrow in front of them, I guess, maybe. Something like that. Trying to keep it true to the cartoon, but also have a little fun with it. Yeah, I... I Never really could tell like the shoes, but I guess there's supposed to be some kind of arrows on them. Uh, I went looking through a lot of artwork and it seems that that's kind of what they're at. So I guess we'll style it a bit. Well, for for Velma, um, I kind of you know if you do if you search like Velma, uh, you know, shoes, there's a specific look to them. So I followed that look uh, with the stockings. So I kind of want to do it with this one as well. But I kind of did my own take on it. I mean, once, you know, I mean, once the outfit and everything's done, I don't think many people are going to be looking at the shoes anyway with this one, so. And I'm thinking now, if we do a, uh, if we go the route of, uh, what is it, a, um, graveyard scene, what I would do is I would put some uh, of that fake grass on the graveyard scene, so you would probably not see the shoes as well anyway. Um... I mean, if we're going to do a graveyard, there's no sense of having a... Uh, well, I wouldn't go high grass, but at least some grass. Not trying to make the ankles pop out, but at least enough that there's something there. <laughs> yeah, Ryu, I don't think I could sculpt one of his. Although, it would be funny to sculpt the Captain America. The famous Captain America. If I did the graveyard, I would definitely have a tombstone there, but I would have to find, come up with an idea, or we can brainstorm an idea of what to do on the grave, on the tombstone. I got somebody who I know who might be able to do a quick uh, 3D sculpt for me, and then I could just print it out. It would be better than me trying to sculpt it. Unless that site has graveyards, uh, tombstones you can download. I'll have to look into it.
Yeah, I'll have to take a look. Um, I think just the, one of the things is kind of like if there's something I want on the tombstone, I would like to have somebody be able to like, you know, sculpt it on for me or etch it out or whatever. I don't know. I'll have to, I could always send it to my friend in Canada too. He could always etch into something. He'd be the one to print it anyway, so yeah, it's a possibility. Yeah, I could do the creators, you know, in memory or something. I don't want to go too morbid, though. I don't know. Keep bulky keep brainstorming. Just got to get through the hump of uh, the figures. I mean, we could even take it to another level and have like a zombie ham coming out of the grave uh, site too. I mean, we can't build a whole scene. I mean, we could, but I don't think I'm going that far with it. Alright, so the eaves has gotten a nice, it's toughened up a lot, smooth out a bit.
go wash my hands real quick. Yeah, Darko, we got a nice little uh, chest there. Yeah, Raccoon, we're going to do more of the pin-up look to her. So it's going to be, uh, I don't know, sort of that version of her. So we're going to see, uh, so the way the scarf is, uh, that one has a longer scarf. So we'll have an opening of the chest. And then we'll have the scarf, so maybe we'll bring the scarf down here a bit. You know, maybe have a little fun with it. Instead of a short, I don't like the short skirt, a uh, scarf. I think a little tiny, little, you know, knot there doesn't really, you know. I think it looks a little weird. I think the longer one would probably have a little bit more fun with it. So you look at that outfit. A little bit more chest showing, and then the scarf probably would come down to here more. Because even the cartoon, the scarf comes down to like here, you know? So we don't want something being short. So I'm thinking this way we can see her chest and come over at this angle here. You know? And then uh, her skirt is going to be, you know, short skirt to about there. We're going to utilize these wrinkles that's already on the outfit, which would kind of play with the outfit a bit. Definitely uh, pink leggings all the way up. So she's basically stockings. So at least the legs are pretty much almost there. So I'm thinking... Uh, I'm going to try to get the legs all fine-tuned and then uh, I want to start working on the hands. I want to make them, well, this hand's going to be removable, but this one's going to get sculpted onto it because when I put the skirt there, I want to make it look like she's pushing into the skirt. So that hand's got to be attached. So I think what I need to do is get into the garage and Dremel out these cuffs because her cuffs aren't that long. They're about right here. So I have to shorten up the cuffs. Um, I think the hardest part is probably going to building up, building the neck and the head. I think this is going to be the hardest part here. Because uh, I still got to take out all this stuff underneath here from the mask. And then I got to rebuild the neck. So her head's going to be attached. It's not going to be removable. Because I figure uh, we'll build out the neck. And then I do the outfit. Then I do the scarf. And then I do the hair. Because the hair is going to come down around her shoulder. So... We'll have a little flow, a little flow this way, because uh, um, Velma's stuff is going to be flowing this way as well. You know, you don't want the flow going this way and uh, Velma in front of her going in that direction.
Uh, raccoon painting this, uh, the stockings won't be bad. It all depends, you know, do I want it to be solid stockings where you don't see any skin? Or do we want to see skin showing through? That's the thing. Um, if you want to show stockings with skin, your best bet is painting the whole entire uh, legs in flesh tones with shadows. And then do a misting of like uh, a dark uh, leather transparency over it. I've done it before. But I think with this one, you know, her stockings are usually uh, pink. So I would think that we do like sort of a, a silky pink paint up on the legs. I think that would look better than trying to make it transparent. Because uh, skin tone with like pinks over it might not look right. I got a little A's left and it's kind of thick. Uh, it's kind of hard enough. I'm going to roll it out so I can use it for something else down the line. Be right back. I mean, I could uh, try to do it with the skin showing, but like I said, uh, we, we could test it, you know, when I'm ready to paint it up. You know, we're going to be doing it on the live stream anyway, so if uh, we could paint up the skin tone and try the stockings, and if people like it, we leave it. If not, we just kind of paint over it. Have a good one, fangirl. Thanks for stopping by. So what I, what I also probably need to do is sort of uh, clean up the hands a little bit and add fingernails because I figure we'll give her some nice fingernails on her. Try to get fingernails on there. So that's pretty much where we're at. So hopefully uh, next week I have her cleaned up and we can figure out what next steps to do. I'm trying to think. I don't think I'll have the head set up for it yet. Maybe I could just drum while at this and we can work on these cuffs. I could sort of start getting the hand ready. Um. Maybe plan out the shoes next week. I'm not sure. It all depends. If I don't, uh, if I don't have the time, maybe we'll just go on to something else for a day. We'll see how it goes. That's the only problem with these items is uh, trying to get it ready for each week's kind of difficult. But I think that's where I'm going to call it for tonight. Got a lot done. Uh, got some ideas going. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. So you guys have a good weekend. Thanks for stopping by. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next week.